Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Zess and I make Rampai minigame tutorials. Thank you so much to my patrons who are supporting the continuation of the channel for more tutorials and scripts to be made. If you're interested in joining and haven't done so already, I have all the tutorial scripts available there as well as other fun scripts not available on my channel. That includes a script and tutorial for a newer and simpler inventory system as well as a day-night cycle tutorial and script that you might find interesting. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at how to make a sideways racing game where you have three characters that will race each other to the goal. The player will pick one of them to play as and then have to alternate between two buttons on the keyboard in order to make it move, which in this case will be the left and right arrow buttons. The other characters will then move automatically towards the goal at different predefined speeds and whoever gets there first wins. To follow along with the tutorial, you need a fresh Rembrandt project in the size 1920 x 1080 pixels using the latest version of the Rembrandt engine. You will also need the image assets which you can download from the description box below. You should know the basics of Rempai to follow this tutorial, such as how to show images, what screens and labels are, and how to set them up in a basic way, otherwise it can be difficult to follow what's happening overall. We will also be doing some Python code in this tutorial, so it's good if you know some basic Python programming, such as how to make a variable and what a function is, but you might still find it interesting and useful either way. The finished script can be downloaded by patrons in the scripted tier or higher. With that said, let's get into the code. As always, you want to make sure you have added the necessary images into the images folder of your project so you can access them in the script. To play the game, the player needs to select a character to play as first. For that, we can create a screen and call it, for example, Racing Game Menu. In here, I have first added a background, which is the same as for the minigame itself, as it contains the road which the characters race on. Then we have a transparent black background, which will make this look like an overlay menu on top of the minigame, even though the menu is just going to be shown by itself, but this will just give the illusion of it. Then we have a text displayable, which acts as the title of this menu. After that, we have an hbox, which contains the characters to pick from as image buttons. These use images of the characters from the menu folder inside the images folder and have idle, hover and selected versions to pick from. So here I've used the auto keyword to let Rampai automatically pick the idle or hover versions of the image. The selected version should be used if the player has clicked on the image button, which we can check by comparing a variable named selected character. This variable I have defined amongst the other global variables just above the start label. It is initialized with the value none to start with, and then in the screen it is set to the character selected with the set variable action. Since the first image button is of character 1, I've set the variable's value to the string character 1. When you use this minigame for your own visual novel, you can of course name the images and characters something better and more fitting for your game. So instead of saying that this variable should be equal to character 1, character 2, and so on, you can name them whatever you want. We are also going to need a play button so the player can start the game after selecting a character, which I've added below. It should only be able to be pressed if the player has selected a character to play as, otherwise they can't play. So I've used the sensitive property and set it to be sensitive only if the selected character variable is not none. If it's not none, then the value true will be used here, otherwise it will be false. Once the player clicks on this button, an action will run, which will set up the minigame so it's ready to be played. That is done by calling a function, which I've named setup racing game. But before we have a look at it, we'll first create the characters that will race in this game. Also, since this is going to be the first screen the player will see when they launch this minigame, we will make sure to call it from the start label. In your game, you're going to want to call the screen from whatever label or screen that fits your game, of course. But for this example, we call it immediately after we have started the game from the start menu. To make the characters, we're going to be using something called a sprite manager and sprites. Those of you who have watched some of my earlier tutorials will already know what this is, but for those who don't know, a sprite manager is a type of displayable in Rampai that you can use to create so-called sprites, which are basically images. And this sprite system in Rampai was made to display a large amount of images at once, such as for example particle systems, with better performance. With a sprite manager, we get to use two functions available to it that allows us to do different things. These are an update function, that keeps running automatically based on how many seconds of the day you want and a function which detects user input such as with the keyboard or mouse. The sprite system is handy for making minigames due to its functionality to detect different user inputs 
and gives us specific information about them that are very useful. And that's exactly why we'll be using it in this tutorial, as we want to be moving a character based on keyboard input, and we want to be moving the NPC characters automatically. I have a link in the description to the official documentation of sprites and sprite managers you can have a look at to learn more about them. To create a sprite manager, we create a new variable and set it to be equal to a sprite manager object, which is created by using the sprite manager class. We then need to supply the two functions that it needs, which is the update function and the event function. The update function I've called NPC movement, as that is what we'll be using it for, and the event function I've called character events, as we'll be using it to detect keyboard events in order to move the character. Once we have a sprite manager, we can use it to create sprites, which will be the images of our characters. To do that, we can create a few new variables for each character and then set them to contain a sprite each. For that, we use a function called create, available to the sprite manager, and supplied with the image of the character we want to create. Here I have three characters with three different images, but you could of course create more if you want to. Now that each sprite has its own variable, we can access them when we need them by referring to the variable names. We are also going to need some global variables that are going to be useful to us inside our minigame that we can access in different parts of our script. For example, we're going to need to know where the goal is located on the x-axis, so when a character reaches that coordinate, they will win the game. In this case, I have set it to 1500, which will be around here where the goal is located in the background image. Another variable we'll use is one that keeps track of the initial x coordinate of each character as they will all start at the same x position. In this case, I've set it to 100, which will be somewhere over here in my background image. Then when we position the characters on the screen for when the game first starts, we can refer to this variable. The player's character will move one step every time we press the left and right arrow keys in an alternating fashion. So knowing that, we need to set how many pixels a step should be. To not make the game insanely difficult to play, I set each step to be 20 pixels large, so once the player has pressed right then left, or the other way around, the character will move 20 pixels to the right. Then when they move again, they will move another 20 pixels. You can play around with this value later on to make it more or less difficult according to your needs, but for now I recommend that you set it to the same value. Now that we have created character sprites and some of the variables we'll need, Let's have a look at the setup function that sets the game up before it starts. So here we have the setup function, which is defined inside an init Python block at the top of the script. In here, we're going to position the character sprites we created earlier, so they will be placed correctly once the minigame starts. We will also of course need to add the sprites to a screen before they will show, but we'll get to that later. To position the characters to their initial coordinates, we'll use the x and y attributes available to sprite objects. These are default attributes the Rampa uses in the background code of the engine itself to move the sprites. So to position the sprites, we simply give values to these attributes. We already have defined a starting x position for each character sprite with the variable character start x pose, so we can refer to it for the x coordinate. For the y coordinate, they will be positioned differently, and here I've set character 1 to the y coordinate of 500, character 2 to 620, and character 3 to 730. And that will make the characters have some space between them, like this. An attribute can be thought of as a variable that stores the information and is only available to the object it belongs to. In this case, the x and y attributes for the sprites stores numbers that Rampy then looks at and does something with according to the underlying code that controls sprites in the engine. So that's just a quick explanation of it in case it helps to understand it a little better. As I mentioned before, any character that isn't picked by the player will be an NPC and should move automatically towards the goal. Instead of having each of them move at the same speed, we can make it more interesting by adding different speeds to each of them. Here I've done so by creating a new attribute that didn't already exist and name it speed. Because we created it, it doesn't have any underlying code in the Rampy engine that does anything with it, but it's up to us to use it some way with our own code, the same way we do with custom made variables. These speeds should preferably be a low value from 0.1 to 0.9 as this is going to be added to the current x position of the characters for the actual movement. The update function is going to run every millisecond to move the characters, so if you make the speeds too large, then the characters will move way too fast. But again, you can experiment with this to see what you like the best. Now that we have positioned and set a speed for each character, we'll also store the position of the currently selected character in a variable called selected character pause. 
This variable is defined with the other global variables above the start label. Here we check which the selected character is by comparing the selected character variable with the names of our characters. If it's character 1, then I set the list variable to contain the x and y coordinate of that character that we access by referring to the x and y attributes we looked at just before. This we're only doing so that we can have a player indicator image follow the selected character as it's moving. And since we are assigning a completely new value to this variable inside the function, we also need to remember to declare it as a global, otherwise it won't work. Now that we have set up everything we need before the game starts, we can go ahead and hide the menu and show the actual minigame screen. This screen is called Racing Minigame. Let's have a look at it now. So here's the actual minigame screen. In here we have the background image of the minigame and then I've added the sprite manager object which contains all the sprites we created. We can't add the sprites themselves to the screen as they are not displayables. The sprite manager is the object that handles all the sprites by creating and destroying them and is a displayable that can be shown or hidden. To add it to the screen, we simply use the add statement. At the bottom of the screen, we have the player indicator I talked about earlier. This is a simple image displayable that is positioned according to the list variable we named selected character pos. The expose property of this image is therefore set to the value of the first item in the list, which contains the x coordinate of the selected character. The y post property is set to the second value, which holds the y coordinate. Because a sprite has its anchor point at the top left corner of its bounding box, the indicator will not be centered over the character with these values alone. In order to fix that, we can simply use some offset values to position it correctly. Here I've added 50 to the x coordinate and subtracted 50 from the y coordinate. This works well for the size of these characters, but if your characters will be sized differently, you want to play around with these offset values to get something that looks good. You might have noticed in the preview of this minigame that there was a countdown timer on the screen before the game started as well as an explanation of how to play the game. The countdown timer triggers when the screen first shows and is done by using the on statement with the value show. The action to run is then the show action which shows the screen countdown timer that contains the actual countdown mechanics. This screen contains a frame with a black transparent background and a v-box inside with two text displayables. One of these displayables contains the actual countdown which references a variable called countdown timer. This variable is also defined amongst the other global variables for this script and is set to the value 3, which in this case means it will count down for 3 seconds. What actually controls the countdown mechanism is this timer displayable below. Here we run an action every second that checks if the countdown timer variable is more than 1. If it is, then we run a set variable action to subtract 1 from the variable. This will happen every second until the variable is no longer more than 1, which means it will stop at 1 instead of 0. So the text displayable will then show 3, 2 and 1. Once the variable has reached 1 and this condition is no longer true, we instead run two different actions which sets the countdown timer variable to 0 instead and then hides the countdown timer screen. When that happens, the game will start and accept input from the player and we'll have a look at how that works soon. We want the timer to repeat as long as the countdown timer variable is more than 1, and if not, we make it stop. To show the player the explanation of how to play the game, we have a frame inside the minigame screen containing a v-box with the actual text together with an animated image of two arrow keys. And this image is simply animated by using an image, a tail block. We don't really want or need this explanation to keep staying on the screen for the entire minigame, Instead, we can make sure it hides once the player has started to move the character, as that's the point they will have understood how to play. For that, I have wrapped this entire frame in an if statement that checks if the count and timer variable is equal to zero, which it will be once it's counted down, and a variable called playStartMove is false. This variable is defined amongst the other global variables and is set to false as the initial value. Later on, once we look at the code for detecting user input, We'll set this variable to true, which will make the explanation then hide. Now because Rempy allows players to focus on the quick menu buttons by using the arrow keys on the keyboard, we can make sure to disable that for this minigame so it doesn't interfere or distract while they play it. For that, we can use the key displayable in this minigame screen and set it to detect when the user presses the left and right arrow keys. Then we set the action to run for this to be a null action. And that's actually all for this minigame screen. 
Let's now have a look at how the actual movement for the playable character is done by having a look at the Sprite Manager event function.